and reviews. Forget the drama when life on the casa. Hello, hello, and welcome back. Welcome back to episode nine. Imagine that. It's a nine. That was weird that I did that, did, isn't it? It's nine. Imagine this. Nine episodes in. Holy cow. Today is going to be a shortened, shortened one, and there will not be one next week. Mike's off in the keys, and I am going with him. He doesn't know yet, but I'm going with him. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Matt. We have amazing angler, YouTube creator, uh, Captain Caleb McCumber today. And if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, you're missing out. He has arguably one of the one of the channels I really, really look forward to to seeing. And so uh, this will be someone else you can check out. What's up, Jason? I didn't hear back from Mike, and I have a question for Mike. I'm going to try him anyway. Oh, Mike will be home in five minutes. So here's my question for everybody. God, my hair is just all over, isn't it? I mean, look at this crap. I just got out of the shower, too. I'd just like to say, I took a shower for y'all. Um, If you were to, I think we all can agree that Kevin Van Dam is the greatest of all time for bass anglers. I hope so. I hope we can all agree on that. But when you start, oh, look at you. Uh, when you start um, looking at some of these up-and-coming anglers, is there a possibility of one of these guys, sorry, I had to, do hand sanitizer. Uh, is there a possibility for one of these new guys to come up and and possibly go on beyond what Kevin Van Dam has done? That's gonna be that is my question for everyone today. I want to know is if if you could if you could if I'm not gonna tell you who my person is. Well, I might as well. As I put on my sock, and I apologize. This is very unprofessional, but my sock is bothering me, and. I'm, and it's making me get freaked out. And now I have to do another hand sanitizer. Here's my thing. If you know and keep up with bass fishing, Jacob Wheeler has done some things over the last few years that just, I don't think you can put in perspective on how great of a fisherman Jacob Wheeler has been. He just won a tournament, an FLW tournament this weekend. I have some stats on Jacob. You know, Jacob's only fished for nine years. But if we were, com if we compare as Kevin Van Dam as the greatest of all time, and then as the Michael Jordan of our fishing, and, and obviously on the uh, the Mount Rushmore of anglers for sure, hands down, he can sell. He can. Uh, he knows how to use the media to his advantage. He knows how to fish, and he's had unbelievable success. Twenty-eight first place finishes in thirty years. Think about that. That's one a year. Some people don't go out um, and win one tournament in three or four years, and some of them only go a whole career and and win one. And when you start looking at the numbers behind Jacob Wheeler, his first 30 tournaments or first seven, I think it's 77 tournaments, Kevin Van Dam won more. I'll, that's the truth. But Jacob Wheeler cashed in more than, than, uh, than, no, no, Kevin Van Dam cashed in more than Jacob Wheeler, but just by a few. Here's why I'm here's what I'm getting here's where I'm getting at. If you look at his stats, and this is just a conversation, by all means, it's just a conversation. It's nothing against Kevin. It's nothing it's not singing the praises for Jacob, to be honest. I I have a better probably relationship with Jacob than I do Kevin. But when I look at when I hear all the stuff about Michael Jordan and LeBron James on all the only thing that they can talk about now on ESPN is that, since the Michael Jordan thing is on. So I don't even watch my ESPN anymore. But if we had to look at it from an, a sense of where it is in our industry, from Michael Jordan being Kevin Van Dam and Jacob Wheeler being 
LeBron James? Is there somebody else that we should put in that category that has a possibility of, as Jason said, dethroning the GOAT? Because Jacob Wheeler, in the nine years that he's been a professional angler, he's been in the top 10 32 times. He's, he's won seven events. Seven events. So kind of comparable. He's fished in three classics. He's won the FLW Cup champion once. He's been the MLF world champion last year. He's earned $2 million, and uh, his average finish is 29th place over his career. So every tournament, he averages 29th place, which is unbelievable. That's unbelievable. He's been paid almost 80% of all the tournaments he, he gets in. Now think about that. Where you're lucky to get a check, Jacob Wheeler is cashing 80% of the times that he goes into a tournament. It's unheard of. It's really unheard of. Um, he's and and since 2000 here's here's some of the stats that I, I want that I really want to bring up. Since since comparing Kevin, which is who's a little bit older, and Jacob, in the same amount of time, Jacob has cashed since 2017. Jacob and head to head, Jacob has cashed 26 out of 32 times. He's had three wins during this time, and he won Major League Angler Grand Champion. During those times that they were head to head, Kevin Van Dam cashed 20 times, and he's had one win. So I don't know if this is just starting a conversation. By all means, I'd love to hear your comments. You can type them on here. Tell me what you think. I think that when I look at it, I think what Jacob Wheeler has started in his professional career right now, I think he's he's making that impression to possibly be the next GOAT. And that's really tough to say because I am one of the biggest Kevin Van Dam fa uh, fans of all time. One of the biggest Kevin Van Dam fans of all time. Butch, I should tell you, today's episode is really designed for you. It is all salt water. Captain Caleb, who's coming come on about 315, he is going to talk all fishing. Um, so, so that's just what I'm saying. Hey, hey, hammer. I could, you know, I, Ray, I could have Jacob, I could call Jacob and, and, and get Jacob on here, but major league fishing is in town next week. So there's a lot of, I think he's driving and I think the practice starts today or tomorrow. So I didn't want to bother him, but I'll have Jacob on hopefully soon. We've had Jacob on a couple times. Truthfully, Jacob is one of the, one of the best interviews we ever had on the regular, the regular radio show on Saturdays, Jacob came on and we got to spend a segment with him and he just had so much information. It was unbelievable. And in my past interview that I did with him at major league fishing on Okeechobee this year, the interview lasted, I think he and I talked for probably uh, 45 or 50 minutes. And Jacob's one of the guys that this is really horrible to say nowadays, the major league fishing, I don't think they, they, because they don't have the media come out. They don't have the fans come out. The, the anglers kind of get out of their boat, do what, do their responsibilities with major league fishing. And then they instantly head out and go to, um, go back home or they, they do lots of stuff. They don't actually spend time waiting for media to interview them. Jacob is one of the few people, Jacob Shaw, I think I saw Jacob Shaw at uh, Bobby Lane. There's a few handful of guys that we're really close with. Jacob is one of the guys that I'd said, hey, look, I need to interview you. He had things he had to do. He stopped, pulled off the side of the road, and, and he literally just waited for me and made sure I had it. So it was, you know, it was, it's just really cool. Um, so that's that's my discussion. That's what I want to know. Do you think that there's a possibility that Jacob Wheeler can surpass Kevin Van Dam? Because as they start off right now, they're pretty comparable in their first um, 77 tournaments that they've fished in. When they go head-to-head -head in the last few years, obviously Jacob is on top of his game. There's no way anyone can say that Jacob Wheeler right now isn't the best angler on the face of the earth. Because Jacob Wheeler right now is the number one ranked angler in the in the area um and 
He is just awesome. As Les said, we spent 30 minutes with him in Knoxville, at least. Jacob makes time for the media and understands the importance of the media. It's, it's really funny that, you know, as we meet anglers and we go to the classic and we do these other things, there's a lot of new anglers that aren't like, like Kyle Welcher is a whole different story. Kyle Welcher is fantastic. He's upfront, he's honest, he's humble, he's all of it. He understands the importance of the media. There's a lot of guys nowadays that don't don't think that the media are worth anything and they don't they don't participate with us. It's a real shame because we're promoting them, which is promoting the sport. And there's been a big a big thing uh saying that there's that there isn't stuff going on. So anyway, um it's something to think about. Uh, I'm going to call I'm going to put a, a a phone I'm going to put a commercial on and I'm going to call Caleb and we'll talk to him and hopefully you can talk to Mike afterwards. So uh hang in there for a couple seconds and I'm going to run a Tackle Webs commercial right now with Shaw Grigsby. So hold on. In 1984, I turned pro. In 1986, I qualified for my first Bassmaster Classic. In the 30 years as a bass professional, I've seen things come and go. In that time, I've won my share of battles. You think you have bass thumb? <laughs> I've got battle scars. I'm Shaw Grigsby Jr. with Tackle Webs. Clear the deck for battle. I am very happy and excited to introduce to y'all. Let me put my little, hold on, Caleb. I'm putting your little icon up for you. Um, he's a YouTube creator guide, sent me one of the coolest videos of all time today, which I really enjoyed since I was working on graphics all morning. I'm happy to introduce Captain Caleb McCumber. How are you, man? Oh, I can't hear you. I think, it, yeah, sometimes your headphones, those headphones don't work right. Hopefully. Hold on, he's gonna he's gonna get something else. I think this guy uh, Caleb has an, a fantastic YouTube channel. You go to Captain Caleb TV, has a fantastic channel. One of the coolest lighting things I've ever seen in my life. I'm trying to figure out how to do this, um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it up to him. Great angler, great guide. Let's see if this helps. No, I can't. Is it over here? No, no, I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I just can't hear you. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see Skype. I have you, the Skype thing unmuted, so... Yeah, this is as someone wrote modern technology at its finest. Uh, no, nothing yet. I, maybe there's a. I have no idea. Do you want to, you want me to try to you want to try to call me real fast and we'll see if it it works again? Okay, I'm gonna hang, hang up. Hold on. Well, hopefully we can get this working. I can hear everything else in my headphones. I think so. Can I? Yes, I can hear that. I read lips, cue cards. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this isn't as easy as you think. Oh, crap. Hold on. Let me, let me do this. I'm going to write a commercial, get another commercial. So hold on, guys. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important, and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But I'm in no the middle of a... what boat he is on, uh, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle Webs. With Tackle Webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels, wherever he needs his stuff. 
Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com. We're going to try this again. Captain Caleb, are you there? I can hear, I can see you, I just can't hear you. I think it, last time I tried it with the headphones, it didn't work for me. I had to plug in these headphones directly into my Mac. Someone said loves hammers. It must be the hair. Yeah. No. I don't know what it is. Well, we're trying to get we're trying to work through the bugs right now, guys. Uh so give us a second here. Uh Captain Caleb is 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 on there. Uh and uh but we're trying to do this. Uh sometimes these lovely things don't work out the same way that you really try them and you want them to work out. Let me see. A poor connection. I have no idea. Well, I still want to hear what you guys think about um, for the for the um, for the Kevin Van Dam Jacob Wheeler. Is there a possibility he's going to restart his computer? Is there really is there a possibility of of someone surpassing Kevin? I mean, really? I mean, you have to look at the whole grand scheme of things when you look at not only tournament wins, classics. Um, but you have so much more that you can, that you can, you have to talk about. Um, I mean, Kevin has done so much through his, his 30 years that it's been just one of the greatest things ever. We're going to try Caleb again here. Steve. Oh, I can hear you Steve. brother. Um, the, maybe the audio quality won't be as good. I've used these headphones this microphone a hundred times but today is just our lucky day i guess yeah it's just how, it's how it is how are you man all right you're all right yes where are we at what are we doing we're, we're live right now you're on live right now so thank you for for being on <laughs> how are you oh is there a, i can hear you you can't hear me I have no idea. We can hear you. Can you see me? I can hear you perfectly. Let me text him. I can hear you. I'm texting. Okay. Uh, yes, you can hear me. I have no clue. I think now what's happening is is that now your your computer probably Let's try this again. Okay, well, he's going to try that again and I have no idea. I have no clue. And I'm this this is unbelievable. Uh I can hear him, he can't hear us now. Uh I don't know why. I can I can see you. Yes. Um all right. Well, I can't see you, and I'm having trouble hearing you now, Steve. But you can hear me at least. I don't think he can hear me either. Very confusing. Very confusing. This has been working for weeks, and now out of nowhere, uh, things are going. Up. Oh, I just lost him, and maybe his internet connection is bad. I have no clue. This is why we test. <sighs> anyway, okay, back to Kevin Van Dam, and and I apologize. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can write messages on the whiteboard back and forth. I should say, let me just let me just give you a little heads up. This whiteboard has taken on a a whole different like body of its own i mean i don't know if you guys are being real that you really hate the whiteboard but i really love the whiteboard and usually the whiteboard isn't meant for this stuff me writing this stuff um but it, it allows me to have a little bit of fun that whiteboard is actually a way that i usually have it so that when uh when 
I'm doing something, I write down my the things I need to do. Like today I got a bunch of new frogs from Z-Man. Uh, and I've got other things that I'm working on. So I put them in order so that I I know what I need to work on. Because really, if you look at this, and I'll... Oh, here's some of the new frogs, by the way, from Z-Man. You can see up close and personal. That's the walking one, great-looking frog. And then this is the popping one. But they make them in two different sizes. But I'll show you. This whole box... Hold on. This whole box is filled with stuff for closer looks. Now there's a there is a new crappy this thing. Uh, but there that's the box of stuff that I'm working on for closer looks. And I think I showed you it last time before, but there's actually a whole box underneath that's completely filled with all of the stuff that I'm done with, but probably will give away. So the whiteboard is actually helps me keep track of the things I need to do. I, I, I'm one of the things I like to do is I, I, everyone just wants to win the whiteboard. You can keep the tackle. Let me, hold on. Thank you, camera. I, I'm really meticulous about writing notes and things like that where I go through probably a yellow pad every week of notes and things that I'm doing and I write down my notes for the show too but the that white that whiteboard has been instrumental on keeping me up to date on how things are so I love the whiteboard when I got this this office by myself that was one of the things I wanted I wanted my own whiteboard that I could write and mark things off there's been other things on there that years months and months ago that were i i should be honest there were hints on things that we were going to do on that whiteboard months ago in some of these closer looks and stuff like that so hold on we're going to try caleb again let's hope for the, i hear him this time oh hello hey dude good thing my uh youtube skills are better than my skype skills huh <laughs> <laughs> it happens. The YouTube channel's great. Let me first off by saying the YouTube channel's phenomenal, dude. Oh, I gotta make I gotta make a Wi-Fi. Oh, we're making a Wi-Fi change, I think. Hopefully. Because he has a poor connection. Let's hopefully it it, it connects right back because we did have him there for a second. If you haven't met, if I haven't mentioned it, you go to Captain Caleb TV uh, on on YouTube. You'll find one of the best new up and coming channels I've seen in a long time. Obviously, he has some video skills and some other stuff because the lighting that he does is phenomenal. It's next level lighting, uh, and I am just mesmerized by the lighting. I don't know if that started or didn't. Caleb, you there? I think I can hear you. No, maybe not. I don't know. Well, we're going to continue to try to get Caleb on here. As we are as we were talking earlier, is there a way to make, to put uh, Jacob Wheeler in that category of Kevin and Dam? Okay, so now, anyways, back to the whiteboard. The whiteboard's been very important to me. Um, yeah, I was happy for two I mean, my wife's happy for three seconds. <laughs> um, but you know, there's, there's, there's so much that goes on with that stupid whiteboard. And now of, of course, uh, the, everybody wants the whiteboard gone. The whiteboard is sponsored by, I should say hammer tech Marine. If you want some of the greatest little hand carved things, hammer tech Marine is a place, dude, I can see you. You look live this time. <laughs> I think that's I think that's working. I can hear you. How are you, man? Oh, you're in slow motion right now. It's kind of funny to be honest. I think it's trying to buffer is what it's trying to do. It's live. If you don't like it, tough titty said the kitty. And I'm allowed to say that now. Caleb, why don't you try to call me back and let the 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 thing buffer again because I think you're in slow motion right now. Uh, 
I'm going to hang up there. And hopefully he can call me right back and uh, we can try this again. It's only 25 minutes. Here we go. Let's hope for the best. Caleb? Steve, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? I was a lot less stressed than I, or a lot more stressed than I was 10 minutes ago. This is working. We are live. This is good. Thank you, by the way. We're we're having bad, bad storms over here right now. Oh, yeah. We're the- we're about to have it. Where are you located? You're on the West Coast, aren't you? I'll t- tell you what I'm going to do. Can you hear me? I'm on full motion right now. You were you were better earlier. Okay, we're having bad storms right now, and is is knocking our power grid out. Yeah, is the problem. You're perfect right now, to be honest. Okay, well then let let let's see if we can make this work. And I apologize to you and everyone else. No, it, 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 it's, it, it's it's getting us over here. It looks great. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. I, I've been telling everybody you got the channel. Tell me a little bit about how you got introduced into the outdoors. Let's start that way. Man, that starts way back when my um, my dad is a big hunting guide in South Texas. And so ever since I was four or five years old, I've been chasing bird dogs, quail hunting, deer hunting, dove hunting. Um, I I grew up I, I grew up in a pretty pretty special lifestyle. They, you know, my dad's governor, senators, congressmen, you know, all the people you don't want to know in life. But whenever I was a little kid, I thought they had cool stories. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that 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 led on i was i was bass fishing when i was a little kid i did a lot of freshwater fishing and then i i progressed to saltwater about time i got my driver's license and it i to be honest with you i never intended to be a saltwater guide but um i have a uh i have a personality whenever i get started with something that i can't stop until i've gotten good at it and one thing led to another and now that's how i feed my family well, I have to say, uh, the video you did today was pretty cool. Of you running the in in that those creeks uh, was really cool. I was going to put it on here and show everybody, but I, I thought, oh, I better make sure it was all right. But the video was awesome because it looked like what kind of first off, what kind of boat do you run? I run a uh, it's a, a custom built boat here in Texas, the JH Outlaw. Okay, and so what it is the 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 J you, you can see how well that boat corners and turns. Yeah. Uh, the reason I use it, I find myself back in the marshes a lot. And there's a lot of places I can't come off a plane. If I come off a plane, I'm stuck. Yeah. And that particular company, I don't know what the boats are called. I guess they're the Formula One boats. They're the little, the little boats with the with the uh, enclosed consoles, little short ones. They run in in ovals all the time. Yes. So that company started making fishing boats, and they're they're pretty neat uh, crafts. Because I, I, it looked like the the. The air, your boat was probably I don't even know, eighty inches wide maybe. Uh, ninety nine I think. Okay, so, and but it looked like there was probably two foot of gap on either side of you as you were riding da- through that ditch. In the wide spots. Yes, it was awesome to see. Um, <laughs> when did you start? Uh, you've been a guide for how long now? Uh, I'm eight years, probably coming up on nine years. Okay. But I've been freshwater fishing, I mean, saltwater fishing close to, uh, I'm going to date myself here, probably 20 fishing for, you know, 34 years. When did you start to, 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 how long have you been doing the channel, the YouTube channel? YouTube, I posted my first video on March 3rd of this year. Wow, uh, you're doing very uh, well. Oh, thank you. It, it, it's blowing me away. Um. I looked earlier this morning. We're almost at 2,000 subs, 3,700 hours watched. Uh, I don't know how many views we've gotten, but every one of them is. Every video hits a thousand within a day or two. And yeah. And uh, my community, we really like to comment and talk in the in the comments down below. I'll I'll spend hours in the evenings and and go through and I'll respond to everything that really requires a response. And and I'm focused more of making it a community and a family more so than just a look at me type of situation. Yeah, the, the channel's wonderful. What you're doing with um, with getting people involved, I love the community thing. That's one of the things I've been trying to do with our channel here. We started a little bit, we started about a year ago on ours, um, but I don't get to go fishing as much as as I would like to. Uh, and I've been trying to do a little bit different things. But the way you're doing your lighting and 
informa- informative videos is is just top notch. To be honest, well, I, I'm I'm almost confused because did you ever do photography or video lessons in your it before? You know that that's a funny story. Before about late, I had never owned a B camera. Um, I'm fairly computer literate. I actually I, my my background is actually oil and gas law, so I've got somewhat of an education. Um, but I had never owned a video camera, never edited video, none of that. And once again, I go back to what I said earlier, my personality, whenever I step off into something, I'm going full, full tilt on it. I slept from 4 a.m. to about 7, 6.30, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Every, every day, right from fishing and got everything put up about 7, 8 o'clock at night, I would watch YouTube channels. Uh, the entire night and it had nothing to do with fishing i was watching channels of learning how to run cameras learning how to edit software learning how to do lighting yeah and um yeah i mean i I just completely immersed myself in it because i i didn't have a clue about it all i knew is that i watched a lot of the freshwater guys i I really like to watch lake fort guy which i've gotten lucky enough to actually make a connection with him since Mm -hmm. i got all this going um and there's a couple more out there and they had they had really high-end cameras doing good editing and then i kick over to the saltwater side which is something that interests me more than bass fishing mm-hmm. and there there's quality out there but it was a lot harder to come across a lot harder to find and then I was, as you could want of a guy with a gopro on his chest just saying hey look at me i'm going fishing which there's nothing wrong with that that's great and yeah i enjoy watching it myself but i wanted to relate more with the people because the um, I, I host a radio show myself over here in Houston, and the 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 thing the thing is is that show is a lot about teaching and learning and everything. And I found that a lot of people, a lot of my peers, they seem to forget where they came from. They they seem to forget that they were the new guy. They I, I'll tell you the first time I ever put a boat back on a trailer, thank goodness that there weren't video cameras back then because <laughs> I did the thing. I see my friends sitting around laughing and everybody else doing it. And, and I'll be honest, I laugh too, but I'm laughing with that, that guy, not at, at him. Is I wanted to help the guy that was where I was 20 years ago yeah. and, and relate with those people. And, and I'm, I'm having a great time doing it. Yeah, I, I, I got to be honest. Uh, since doing the ch- our channel in the last year, we, we've grown on a steady pace. But it's, it's really a learning curve on... Uh, cause I've done graphics my whole life and, and I'm, I'm really a lot more like you because like, I've never had a, any formal training in graphics. I've never had any formal training in editing. I do it, uh, because I get into it and I want to know how people do it better. Uh, and the YouTube thing is, is one of these things that, man, it's so weird. I mean, Lake Fork guy does a great job. There's a bunch of the, the goo guys they do. I mean, I don't, I do watch them every now and then. You know, you you look at it and go, wow, this is what they're doing, blah blah. There, there isn't that much to it, but they always they're they're killing the game out there right now. But to, for someone to for you to be doing it in saltwater is even better, I think, because I, there is that I think there's that niche missing in the industry for us. Right. So and that's exactly where it came from. Yeah, yeah, that that's cool. Now I, I see up there in the corner. Did you what kind of fishing tournament did you win up there? Um. Actually, that's a that's a that's a cool story, and you may regret asking me because there's a little bit of a story behind it. No, no, I like this. Uh, all of my all of my big checks and stuff like that, they're they're in a closet, or my wife's thrown them away, or something. That up there is it belongs to my seven year old. There's a uh, there's a big pro tournament series over here, and it's, it's called the Galveston Redfish Series. And and last year there were 72 teams, and most all of them were the upper end guys. And they put in a rule. They said if you're fishing with anybody under the age of 14, that person fishes free. Um, and and I was and then they also had an 18 and under, you know, side division. And so I thought that I introduce Cade, my son, to tournament fishing and, and all this, and let him have a good time. And maybe if we get really really lucky one time, that you know we'll get to be on stage together and get that picture that every dad wants with his son. Uh huh. The, the kid won four out of five tournaments. He won Angler of the Year, and then he and I won second by a quarter of a pound for overall team of the year. Shut last up. Year. 
<laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I'll send you the picture the, at the championship. That kid standing on the side of my boat with more hardware than you can imagine. That is and awesome. A big old grin. Um, but yeah, so that check that that uh, you know, I've won I've won a, a couple of them in my life, and that right there is the most special check that that has ever entered this house. I hope you keep that up forever. How old is your son? Uh, he's eight. He's, he just turned eight, so he was seven last year, eight now. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. I have a, I have a 10-year-old that loves fishing, but he's gotten um, – he. the only thing he's competitive at is when he's fishing against his dad. When we go swimming and do everything else, he doesn't have that fire. But when he's fishing, when he's when it's up against dad, there's there's something to it. How did you introduce him into? Did you just start taking him uh, fishing early? How did you get him introduced into the outdoors? Cade started going with me when he was about three years old, and uh, judge me if you want, but I have videos of him when he was almost four, and he's running across open bay at forty miles an hour, completely controlling the boat. Um, by the time he was five, I was standing on the front of the boat when we would chase birds or something like that, and I'd tell him, go get me on the other side of those birds, and he'd, he, he'd jump my boat up on plane and take me and set me down on those, those birds, and then that stuff, that video, he does but a couple of days ago, I had him in the boat, and he was running stuff pretty similar to that, uh, um, but uh, the yeah, the... Uh, a, a funny story about him is, is he's so into it. And he doesn't realize he's a little kid. He's the only child. He thinks he's as big as, as I am. Yeah. We were fishing one of those tournaments, and he hooked up to a pretty good redfish. And it's one of the situations where the redfish, it, it hit him at the same time he set the hook, and it jerked him smooth out of the boat. <laughs> and he, he held onto his rod and reel. He has his boat in the other uh, the boat in the other hand. He climbs back up, and the kid will boat flip a fish like a grown man. He gets the fish in the boat, and... uh it wasn't 30 seconds. He looks at me and said, Dad, can I take my life jacket off? I said, dude, you just fell in. No. So, <laughs> that is, that's a great he's, story. He's pretty you know, with it. You know, he still does eight-year-old things. He, he's, he's into it pretty good. How, how long have you been doing the radio show? I didn't even know you did a radio show. So the radio show, it's a, uh, it's a podcast. Okay. And um, a fellow named John Lopez hosts it. John is, they call him the OG over here. He's, he's a big time sportscaster. He fought, he was the guy that covered Sosa McGuire. Um, he, you know, he, he can tell you some wild sports stories. And then another captain named Scott Knoll, who's, I don't, uh, Scott's in his sixties and he's, he's a, he's a legend in these parts as well. He's a fly guy. Um, they started that show almost two years ago now. And about the third episode, uh, Scott gave me a call and asked me to be on it. And that went so well that now I'm I'm regularly on that on that show. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you, uh, tell me a little about Texas fishing. I know it's unbelievably shallow, but uh, the fish when you when a, when you take a, a guy, when you're guiding, do you go after redfish or trout? Which one? You, which what's the preferable fish you usually target? Um, my I made my name as a big trout gator, so. Um, and so I still get a lot of customers that ask to go chase trout. Now that being said, I would prefer to go c catch redfish. Um, they're they're equally as accessible over here. Uh, we have you know my the particular bay system that I guide in, the deepest spot is probably eight feet. Mm -hmm. But we have a bunch of marsh over here where I can put my tower on the front of my boat and go sight cast redfish just like you could in Florida. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really fifty fifty. It just depends on what the customer wants to do. But uh, we have a great red fishery and a great trout fishery over here. Use a lot of DOA, uh, the shrimp from Mark, or what? What's your favorite lure? What's the favorite lures you like to use? Um, the one that I use the most is the three inch DOA cow shad. Okay, that that's what I use the most of. I throw a lot of spinner baits. I throw a lot of uh, the little swim baits on the jig heads. Yeah. Whenever I then that's red fishing trout fish assassin rat tails i throw a lot of paul brown corkies that that's that's really what put me on the map was the paul brown corky and 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 my ability to teach people how to do it and that's what i've been doing for a lot of my guiding career yeah well like i said i uh the channel you're teaching everybody on the channel which is is wonderful the lighting is fantastic the lighting is ridiculous literally i said i have a friend that does that's filmed some of the best 
TV shows on the earth. He works for, used to work for Bonnier Corp and did their te- the television show for them. And I said, you have got to check out this dude's lighting. And he's like, oh, you could do that. And I'm like, no, no, I don't want to do that. But you just got to see how good it is because it's it just makes the videos that much better. So I congratulate the, congratulate you on that. And and hopefully, I, I mean, do you know? Do you ever come over to Florida by any chance? Do you ever fish over here? I do. Uh, Buddy Kirkhart over in Stewart is a good friend of mine. He's uh, the night night hair and light tackle guide service over there. Um, I, I I'll show up over there. I'll show up to ICAST. Um, with, I'm over there every now and again, you know, maybe three or four times a year. Uh, My schedule doesn't let me leave Texas very often, but I I do make it to Florida. Yes, sir. How, how, how many charters do you do uh, every year? Are you like busy every day? Are you a guide in every day these days? Right now to get on my books, probably late October, November is the first time that I can put somebody on my books right now. Wow. Dude, that says, do you have a, now do you have a lot of repeat business or is this new clients or it, I, it, it, it's both. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of repeat stuff. I have a lot of people that at the beginning of the year, they'll, they'll just, you know, hand me a big old check for five or 10 trips and, and just t- stake them out. But yes, most, most of my business is repeat. Um, since my YouTube channel got started, uh, of course, I'm picking up some new, some new business here and there. But finding somewhere to put them in, you know, that's the difficult part. Do you, when because I know you guys have like ultra shallow waters. That's why you guys run those really skinny flat bottom boats over there. When uh, do you ever do any like double charters? And how far do you how far where you put in? Do you have to run to go find fish generally? So in my particular bay system, I'm looking at about 20 miles to go. Because the bays that, that I fish are landlocked, so I have to run down the intercoastal quite a good ways to get into the bay and then to wherever I'm going. Um, and, yeah, and there, there's a lot of places where I'm running through a foot or less of water to, to get where I'm at. Uh, the other bays around here, a lot of those lucky guys get to drive three miles and they're on the fish. But in, in my particular estuary, I, I've got a pretty – I'm going to burn 30 gallons of gas a day, period. Yeah. There, there's no way around it. Yeah. Well, like I said, keep doing – Keep doing what you're doing on the YouTube channel. It really, really is good. And I appreciate you being on here, and hopefully we can get sh- catch up again soon and uh, do another one of these uh, when the weather's better for you and, and talk and see how you're – and just catch up. And if you're ever in Florida and you need – and you're here, by all means, you got a place to stay if you're ever coming to Orlando, you and your family. We'll, we'll certainly do it. I'll look you up if I get over there. Yes, thank you. Everyone, go check out Caleb's YouTube channel. Check what is your uh, your face your check. You can check him out on uh, Facebook, but you can also as what's your we- you can also check him on the website. What's your website name? My website na- name is captaincaleb.com. C A B T Caleb dot com. Awesome. My Facebook is Caleb TV. My YouTube's Captain Caleb TV. Awesome, dude. Thank you very much for the time. Sorry we had problems there at the beginning, but man. One of the best dudes I've met, man. Thank you for being on here. Thank you so much, Steve. Now that the thunder's gone, I can hear you and see you. <laughs> well, I don't. Y'all be safe. I don't know if everybody wants to. See, I, I have a face for this radio thing. I should. I should have just had you on the full screen. But thank you very much, man, and continue success and good luck, man. Thank you so much, Steve. We'll talk to you soon. Later, bro. Right, bye. That was Caleb McCumber. Uh, might have started off a little rough, but you want to know what? Finished up freaking fantastic. Tim, I would say, I'll say, Tim, our boy Tim Ledger, uh, watches a lot of YouTube channels, so he likes uh, Fletcher the Fisherman, Yak Pack Outdoors, Fishing with Norm, Ryan Easy Fishing, I don't know what that one, Scott Martin, of course. Of course, he likes Fishing Florida Radio, because if he doesn't, holy cow, what happened there? Let me remove that. Um... And he watches a bunch of Lojo and all those other guys, West Weston. So anyway, go check out Captain Caleb TV. You're going to be very happy that you do. I'm going to try to do a commercial right now. And at the same time, I'm going to call Mike and see if I can get a hold of him real fast, especially since we won't have a show next week. So I'm going to run the Costa commercial, but I'll see you in a few minutes, a few seconds. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, we'll have a little bit more success with our next guest because he's been doing this every week with me. Captain Mike, hello. How are you, man? Hello, my friend. Hello, my buddy. How are you? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you well. I see the new hats. Yeah, yeah. New hats are on. I got a few of them, so (laughs) wear them out. (laughs) Yeah. I had someone steal one of mine, Byron. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I know you traded it for some gumbo. Uh, to be honest, I I know how it works. I I would trade it for some gumbo. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Now you're heading down to the Keys next week. Tell me what the what the what's the game plan for the the family and and for you fishing? Hoping what? we stay dry. We'll oh, see. oh yeah, the tropical moon storm hurricane crystal ball of course would show up when I've got a game plan, but yeah, we'll go down there down there and fish offshore, do some, you know, refishing, get inshore, chase some permit, get the, the project boat out and about, see how, uh, you know, I've got a few trinkets and tricks that I want to do, do, and we'll do some filming and, uh, hopefully get on some nice game fish and, uh, you know, have a good time down there, man. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, Relax. Yeah, relax. Have some some time with the family. Not like we haven't had enough time with the family with this COVID crap. I want them. I want them out of the house. To be honest, I want them both gone. Just leave. <laughs> yeah. Well, when it's boat time or dock time, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah, that is. How has the the boat? Oh. Have, have you you been working on the boat? Can you give us some updates on what you've been doing with the project boat? We got a new one. So we had. I got this. Just got this today. What is is oh my gosh is that for the now that's for the jack plate this is the jack plate the jack plate bobs so it's got a bobs jack plate so I got one of these um, it's leaking all over the place so there's uh, just just hydraulic fluid just leaking everywhere it's still working yeah right but I got into into wiring and trying to check and how it's you know where it's leaking and everything else and I just figured just figured it out that it's probably better just to buy a new jack plate pump. And we're going to go ahead and completely re- replace it all. And so I have fresh wiring going in and everything. All the s- solenoids are new. So hopefully we'll have that installed on Saturday. And we'll have that, that done. So that will hopefully be a video, too, where you can see how to replace it and put in. And plus, it's a lot newer. They have a lot neater connections and stuff like that for the, the new pump. So hopefully we get that to work. And you've got the trolling motor on the back, too, since we talked to you last week, I think. I have, but I have not tested it out. Oh. So works in and out. We have not put it on the water to see how it would work. So we've got this this uh, uh, Minn Kota. This here is is a navigation puck, and that gets you where you aim it to the, to the bow of the boat, put oh. it flush, and then you can Bluetooth this to the Minn Kota Alter, Altera. And then that'll basically, when you do your spot lock or you want to go ahead and jog an area or move around, that'll give you that option. So that's... That's also something we'll be adding to the project boat as well. So Now, you put the trolling motor on the back of the boat instead of the front. What was the thought behind that? Um, <laughs> oh, we're having terrible... Con- up, I think I just lost Mike. Your connection just went bad, and it, and really, that's the a worst. You couldn't have asked for a better time for it to to ask for reconnection then right there because that Stuff like that yeah. hey you have to start over you had bad yeah. reconnection now you have to start out over Emma, yeah we got Willie coming in here too yeah tell me exactly again sorry to, why you put it in the back instead of the front because we missed that whole part it gets in the way of fishing number one because you always have that you know even even when it deploys it still has that that bracket in the deck of the boat yeah and then if I can get 20 feet, have that motor 20 feet behind me when we're fishing and pushing the boat, even if it's slower or, or if it doesn't work as well pulling as it does pulling, if I could just get myself directionally on top of the fish, especially when you're coming up on permit and bonefish and, and charping on the flats, redfish, it'll give you that much of a, an advantage of getting closer. And sometimes, you know, a foot or two is all you need Yeah. to get on some game fish. So. When, now that you're heading you're, you're heading down to the Keys next week, are you sure everything is open and everything is good to go? I mean, have you looked into that? 
June first, they they opened up. Everything okay. opened up June first. Uh, um, so yeah, I actually had some friends rejected last Thursday. They got turned around, but they opened up June first. So three days later, they took down everything. No more checkpoints. So do you think that without all of the uh, uh, get going? Do you think with all of the do you think there's been less pressure on the fish? So when you go down there, it might be easier fishing than normal keys fishing when where it's kind of tough to find bone fish and stuff like that. I mean, what are your thoughts that way? I would assume that it's boat traffic is going to be the, the key to it. There might be the guys, the locals were out there fishing anyways, but there's a lot less yahoos out there running around boats yeah. all up and down the bays around the flats, running over flats. And uh, so I would imagine that, it was a nice little break. I'm I'm excited to hit it just the right time. We'll be you know second week as if it opening up and getting in there. So so be interesting to see. So yeah, I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm, now you're going to take the yeah, the, the new new boat offshore, or are you going to take the the project boat offshore? I mean, what 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 boats going down south? Everything we bring in the a whole fleet down. The, down. the whole we got. Plus, we got family down there with boats and friends with bigger boats. Yes. And, you know, we get it done. Yeah. It's I, a, yeah. It's an up fish, come back, eat fish, hmm. fish off the dock, and go to sleep. And that's and how it should rinse be. Rinse and repeat. Yes. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. So hopefully the weather will be good for us and we can do that. So. Uh, that's cool. Well, there's a bunch of new great things. We've talked about it for weeks. There's a bunch of new great things coming out for tackle webs. Uh, I don't have, do we have an idea on when some of the new stuff is going to be ready for people to see? Be July, hopefully. Good. So we're about a month away. I think everyone's going to be really, really happy. And not to mention, I think some of the new stuff is stuff everyone should have with them. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to show, show off this new stuff. No doubt, no doubt. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming on here with me. Next week we won't be. Hey, I got, I got something for you. We got to, we got to say uh, congratulations oh. and a shout out to Bounce, Bouncer's Captain Bouncer Smith yes. down in Miami. He's retired. Retiring. He's retired, officially retired. I think they had a whole ceremony today, but I never got the fish one. But I've met him many times. He's a great captain, a great influence. Uh, the guys that grew up down south like myself. So, uh, great shout out to Bouncer! Congratulations, and you know, hopefully, he has a uh, a great time retired. Yes, from the salt. I had a question for you, just just out of curiosity. I don't know if you watched yesterday's pre-show. I started th- I started doing all the re- oh, thanks by the way. Uh, I started doing all this research. Not like uh, I'm not doing everything else in the middle of all the crap. Um, do you think you know we we agree that Kevin Van Dam is the greatest tournament bass fisherman? Correct. I mean, you agree with that, right? Do I? Do you? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If if yeah, it's I think it's it's common not or commonly recognized that he is the best tournament bass tournament tournament angler. Yeah, of all time. Of his time. Yeah. Now, I don't know if all that's been debated. We've been debating this for years. I, we? I, we have been debating it for years. But here's here's what I'm here's what I'm what I'm bringing up is right now Jacob Wheeler is on a different level than anybody else he is just on fire is do you think that there's a way that someone could something someone like a jacob wheeler could get to that plateau that we put kevin van dam on is there a way to to, that someone else could be the goat of all time for bass fishing and it could be jacob wheeler what are your thoughts on that just out of curiosity there's no doubt somebody could be there yeah there's no doubt at all i mean that's it's, this the sport of fishing. It's any any sport, I guess, in that grand scheme. Everybody, there's an era, and then, and that era, there's the greatest of all times. And then, you know, they they come and go, and you know, there's other guys that come out. Plus, the reality is, you know, it's not like basketball where you know you're limited. Mm-hmm. Your your shoes are going to get a little better. The basketball stays the same. <laughs> you know, the rules change a little bit. <laughs> But that's it, man. You you got you either got the skills or you don't, man. You know that's it. You can't, you know. But in in this sport with the electronics and power poles and you know depth finders and motors and God knows what else they're gonna have that come available, you know, it's definitely a different playing field altogether. So why not, man? There's young guys coming up that are gonna be sticks, and 
if they learn this technology and they get an angle of it, they're going to become, you know, they could be the best or what you would consider the best of all times. And they probably could leave some of these guys in the dust. Yeah. I, I, I was just, now do you lose the art, but do you lose the art of the fish, the fish, the fish? And that's the thing that I'm always talking about. Like growing up, there was always an art to it. That's why the old guys, your grandfathers and your dads, they had an angle on you. You know, they, they always knew something. They either knew how to work. The, they didn't the share bait, the baits. They doing it for longer. The guys knew, <laughs> They knew the baits, the guides, the older guides, they knew the tides better, they knew, you know, certain aspects. They just, it was something that came with, you know, decades and decades of doing and fishing um, and, you know, weathers and all these things. And you learned it little by little, but it wasn't something that you easily learn. And it yeah. took time, but there was an art to that. Now, how much is that art is going to be lost in that aspect of technology? And does that, you know... Will that ever be something that can be? Can technology fill that gap? That's the question. And and really, when we talk of Jacob Wheeler, Jacob Wheeler's been one of the guys who says a lot of his success has been because of all this new technology of depth finders and fish the all you know the the fish fish sonar stuff. He really gets into it. But I, I when I started looking at like stats, like Kevin uh, Jacob Wheeler's stats are just ridiculous. He's cashed in like 80% of all the tournaments he's ever fished in. His average finish in every tournament he's ever fished in for 77 tournaments is 27th place. Uh, is 29th place, excuse me. And when you compare Kevin Van Damme and, and Jacob Wheeler head-to-head, -head, Jacob Wheeler, since just competing head-to-head, -head, Jacob Wheeler's only missed six checks during the same time that they fished against each other, has three wins, and last year he won Grand Champion for Major League Fishing, where Kevin Van Dam has only cashed 20 times. He's you know six less than, than uh, Jacob, but he's only had one win head-to-head. -head. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those... Yeah, but head-to-head... -head you can't get in the head to head. I know. I mean, it's like putting you can't put Jordan right now on the on the on the field with LeBron. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you know, there's two they're two different generations. I, I would call it. I yeah. Mean, this there's a new era and Wheeler's part of it. And so is you know what's a prop not not a what's your buddy the GoPro the guy you fish with all the time. Ott drawing a blank. No, not Ott. The young guy, the young gun. He went back to. He went back to bass, didn't he? He was a GoPro oh, guy. Oh, Brandon, you mean? Brandon. Yeah, Palinik. Palinik, yeah. I was saying Prosnik is Palinik. But Palinik, look at him, man. Like, he's he's a stud, and he's been able to – he comes up with this – what did he tell us? It was like a triangular yep. type technique and stuff like that. Like, you imagine that's just the start of these guys coming up with these theories and patterns and algorithm things that they're going to come up with, with technology and, and better baits – and all this crazy stuff. And then, you know, you've got guys, you know, but are those guys that have the mix, they have the art and the feel for it. And they also, you know, they, where their guts, right. And they have the tech ability to take advantage of the technology. Mm -hmm. Look at, look at our boy, John Cox. Yeah, man. I got, I mean, does, does he have electronics on his boat yet? I don't think so. I don't think John he has anything. Put, he's just, he's, he's all the art, man. He's all the guts. He just went, he goes out there and, and crushes them too. But imagine if that guy had the technology, you know? Yeah. Well, I think he has the opportunity to have that technology. I just think that he, well, no offense to John. I don't think he's, I don't think he wants it, or I'm not going to say what I want to say. <laughs> he just, but he just he doesn't, doesn't give a rip. To have, he, he doesn't. He doesn't. If you, if you dialed him, get the right guy like that dialed in with the right technology, and he could put marry those two things together. Oh, God, he'd be unbelievable. I'm going to text him after this and tell him that. Some will buy him a depth finder. Yeah, tell him Tackle Web just bought him the, the, the Wait, depth finder. Go fund the account up. <laughs> go fund me for John Cox. Like, he needs any money. Oh, Helix, Helix yeah. Yep. Okay, well, uh, uh, Jason Beck asked, has Kevin KVD won any Major League Fishing events? He actually has. He won a, uh, one, he's won one in the last couple years, and he's... Uh, uh, he's won some of the series events too. So, anyway, well, I hope you guys have fun down there. He can still catch him, man. He can still catch him. But oh God, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's he's had a heck of a career, and I mean, you can't be get legend status unless you have time under your belt, and it takes a while to build up that brand. 
I mean, it just does. Well, that was one of the things I was saying bef- uh, before we did. Kevin does something that, well, so does Jacob. Jacob does go out in there and sell a product, the ducket rods and the Guggen baits and all those other stuff. He does a good job promoting. There's a lot of guys that don't have that that skill set yet, unfortunately. They just go out there hoping to make a check. Um, you know, but Kevin does it well. There's a handful of them. Kevin, Edwin, um, Jacob does well, Mike Iaconelli does well, Gerald Swindle, Brandon Palinick does real well at there's a lot of guys that just, you know, do are able to use the media to their advantage. And there's other people that just they just don't give a they don't give a crap, unfortunately. So Yeah. It's a different it's a different time in, in the industry. I mean, that's that's just what it is. So a lot more opportunities for guys too though because there's a lot more we open the field up from just the Bassmaster elites being the primary thing with flw you know teetering in the background to bringing in a whole major league fishing and then opening this up so you just open up another whatever you know tournament series that's going to get a lot of media there's you know but it spreads the the, the thin the uh, industry thin but there's opportunity for guys to come in and fish and and be good yeah yeah that's for sure Okay, well, good luck next week. There will not be a show next week at all, thank goodness. Uh, but you'll have to send some updates and post some pictures on the Facebook page if possible if, on how you guys are doing if, if you can. All right, so I, I don't have to get off the water at 3 o'clock to be here no. and be <laughs> FaceTiming with you? Well, actually, okay. if you're on the water at 3 o'clock next Wednesday, I'll do a show just with you and I on the water. I'll be on the water. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, it, it, cell phone service is spotty in the Keys. I mean. As it should be. Yeah, well, yeah. Get aw- get away from all of it next week, man. Just get away from all of it. Okay, well, tell us. You know, a coconut tree and coconuts. I'll rub them together, <laughs> together get some, get it going. <laughs> you know, we're going to have a long coconut cord from my, from a pop gun to the Keys. <laughs> Look at my- telegraph, man. <laughs> we're going to be sending smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh well everyone thank you for watching mike sign us off tell us what they should be doing T- of course take a kid get fishing your fish on. but get your fish on thanks guys we'll take a kid fishing yes dude thank you and i'll talk Make to you fish. soon later See guys thank you for watching i hope you guys get your fish on and you catch some fish and make sure you go to this, uh, uh, the youtube channel subscribe i think t- t- tuesday or Saturday's upload is going to be of of uh, the Knocking Tails lure. So I would show you it now, but I heard the be- the beep of the chime walk in. So my wife is home, so I'm going to go say hello to her. But guys, take your kid fishing. Get your fish on. We will see you soon. Cheers, guys. <laughs>